Okay, in this video we're going to talk about vectors, triangles, parallelograms, and determinants. Um, and we're going to come up with a really interesting result. So let's get started. So we're going to start with two vectors, um, and we're going to make a parallelogram out of them. And now we're going to label some things. So let's call this vector u, this vector v. Um, and then the area of a parallelogram is just the base times the height. So if you look at it, the base of our parallelogram is not the vector u, but it's the magnitude of the vector u. Um, so that's going to be easy. It's really the height we need to figure out. Um, so let's fill in theta, because if you have two vectors, you pretty much always fill in theta. And here's our height. So it's from, uh, you know, from the base all the way up. And we can take this and move it over here. And now we have a right triangle. And in that right triangle, you can you can see that the height, so h, is going to be, um, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, is uh, going to be the sine of theta. So the magnitude of v is the hypotenuse, and then the sine of theta. So that's just from right triangle trig. And so now we know that the area is actually the magnitude of u, and then times this height that we just calculated. So the magnitude of v sine of theta. Okay, so that's not so bad. Um, but then we know that uh, theta is related to u and v because of the vectors. So we know that the cosine of theta is going to be u dot v over the product of the magnitude. So magnitude of u times magnitude of v. So this, what we're doing has just tons of properties of vectors um, and things that you probably have memorized, hopefully. Um, so now we can figure out that theta is the inverse cosine of all that stuff. So the dot product over the product of the magnitudes. Hopefully you've done a lot of problems with that at this point, so that's kind of second nature to you. So we're there. Um, and so that means that really our area, this is gonna look a lot worse, is the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, then the sine of this theta that we just calculated, which is the inverse cosine of the dot product over the product of the magnitudes. Uh, but don't worry, because things are gonna clean up somehow. Um, so now I look at this and I think, well, I've definitely done problems in my life where I had a composition of a trig function and inverse trig function. And to deal with that, I always drew a triangle. So I'm going to draw a triangle. And I guess the sides of this are just going to be really weird. Um, it's going to be, uh, here's theta. And then I know that cosine of theta from here is the dot product over the product of the magnitude. So adjacent side is going to be the dot product. And then the hypotenuse is going to be the magnitudes, product of the magnitudes. And then the missing side by the Pythagorean theorem is just going to be the square root of the hypotenuse squared. And then minus the, uh, the adjacent side squared, which is the dot product, so minus the dot product squared. Okay, so this isn't really looking all that much better, but if you remember... We're looking for sine from this triangle. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and something really nice happens there. So we got uh, the product of the magnitudes just hanging around. Now sine, we're going to pull off of the triangle. So it's opposite, which is the, mag the square root of the magnitude squared minus the dot product squared. So far, so good. And if you see immediately, the um, all that magnitude stuff is just going to cancel because it's in the numerator and the denominator. So already we've kind of worked out a formula. So we could definitely say that the area of the parallelogram is actually just the square root of uh, the product of the magnitude squared minus the dot product squared, which depending on what you're doing might be enough for you. Um, so if that's plenty for you, you could uh, definitely stop there. But we're going to keep going. So we're going to keep going to this. So say that we actually know the components. So we have uh, u is going to be u1, u2. v is going to be v1, v2. Um, what else? So the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. The magnitude of v is uh, the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. And then also the dot product. Okay, so we, we now have things that we can substitute for everything in this formula. So this page is just going to have a ton of algebra on it. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So uh, 
that product of the magnitude squared can be the magnitude squared times the magnitude squared. Just a little easier before we, we dive in. Okay, so now we're going to make some substitutions. So the magnitude of u was the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared, but then we're squaring it. So I've done that with v also, or the magnitude of v. And then I replace the dot product. Okay, so now I'm just going to do a ton of algebra and expand everything. Square root of, so just going through and doing algebra. It's like expanding binomials here, or product of binomials. And here, it's going to be a minus, then you got to square that. Don't forget the 2 when you square that. All right, tons of stuff. But uh, we've seen things like this before where we know that a lot of stuff is just going to cancel. So if you look, uh, because of that minus sign, we've got uh, u1 squared, v1 squared. It's going to cancel. And then we got uh, u2 squared, v2 squared also going to cancel. And then we're left with this, that, and that. All right, so I'm going to also rearrange it when I rewrite it. I'm rearranging it uh, because I know what's going to happen. That's one of the advantages. If you don't know what's going to happen, you don't always know how to rearrange things. So this, if you look at it, it's not really obvious at first. This is actually um, a difference squared. So it's actually u1 v2 squared, uh, u1 v2 minus u2 v1 squared. That thing factored. And now we have the square root of something squared, and that we know is the absolute value of the thing. Okay, so uh, this, if you remember your determinants, this is actually just the absolute value of a determinant. So it looks like we can definitely say that if we are given the components, so u1, u2, and then v1, v2, the area of the parallelogram is just the absolute value of the determinant formed by the vectors as the rows. And uh, so that's useful. So we can kind of summarize this. This is a big result. I mean, it took a while to get there. So if we're given this, then we know that the area of the parallelogram is going to be the absolute value of the determinant. And we also know, I mean, uh, a triangle is just half of a parallelogram. So the area of a triangle is going to be one half of the determinant. Um, huge result. It took a while to get there. I'm going to do one example for you just to show you. It's uh, Doing the problems after you work this out is kind of, uh, it's really simple. So say I have these three points and they're determining a triangle in the plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create vectors. So I'm going to make a vector u that goes from there to there. So uh, change in x is 4 and change in y is negative 1. So 4, negative 1. I'm going to make another vector that goes from uh, here to here. Change in x is plus 1. Change in y is uh, also plus 1. So this is the vector 1, 1. So now to find the area of this triangle, it's going to be one half of the determinant. So I put the vectors in as the rows of the determinant, and then uh, so that's going to be one half the absolute value of, so it's four times one is four minus one times negative one. So that's four plus one is five. And so the area of the triangle is five halves. And knowing this uh, makes it incredibly fast to do those sorts of problems. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.